all right guys welcome back so today we'll be looking at handling standard input and output all right so we'll see how to handle or deal with inputs made by user or a default fixed input made by the programmer all right so the c language provides many functions to manipulate files reading and writing which store in our standard IO, which means input and output header file. That's why, if you notice, you always make sure most of our C, most of our C program will always have these header files. Okay, so it helps us manipulate files when it comes to reading and writing. Okay, in your C program. So that's what we want to look at. We want to look at some portions of the libraries that are inside, like some functions that are inside this library of standard inputs and outputs .h files. All right, so there are three file streams. Streams means series of bytes, okay? So there are three file streams that are available to use in our program. So we have the standard input for reading, standard input for writing, and the standard error for writing error messages. That is usually those return, like if you write something like return one, it will bring some kind of error if you use it in your main um, function. If you put return one instead of return zero, so that's just like a, that is just what standard error is about. But we are majorly today focusing on the first two. All right, so we're looking at the standard inputs for reading and the standard output for writing. All right, so the first part we say getting input from the user. So now we want to write a program whereby we are going to get input from the user themselves. So we want to type in the values that they want to use your program for. All right. All right, so I actually built a program of a game which I titled Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? All right, so I just want to show you an example of how an input looks like, whereby it will be a user that will be building stuff for you, then it will not tell the program to run whatever values the user chooses to input. All right, so let's start the game. Who wants to be a millionaire? Input one to begin, input zero to walk away. Well, I want to begin because I want to make money, so I'm going to say one, enter. All right, the game has begun. Let's go. Question one: What's the name of a pet of a place you go to to see animals? Obviously, we know it is zoo. All right, so my answer is four. You can see all this answer I'm putting. This four is a standard input. Okay, so it's user that is putting this stuff. So I put enter. Then bring out the next thing. Okay, correct answer. Wow, you just won five hundred million. Wow, I just, I just got the alert now in my phone. Wow. Okay, okay, that's nice. That's nice. I have five hundred thousand now. All right, so next. Question will fetch you one million. Wow, I will need that one million. Very important. <laughs> okay, question B. How many legs does a spider has? Okay, especially the spider actually have four. Okay, it has four. Let me just it's the four, which is the four of our option. Enter. Oh, oh, oh. How many, how many legs does a spider have? I think is it four? Or is it eight? Wow, so I just lost like this. I lost in my own game. Can you imagine? <laughs> okay, okay. Well, you just get the points. You get the points. I think it is that five or eight. So whatever answer it is, okay, it will give you the it will give you another um another pop-up that you have won one million. All right. So I will well, it's good as I will feel this so that you see that there's also another condition here that I use. Whereby if I get a wrong answer, um the once you once you use that gets and get a wrong answer, it will point another sentence entirely okay you told me wrong answer this time around and you said okay since i failed this time i'm done so you are walking away with five hundred thousand. congratulations we have enough is better than not so i think from this program i have done you've seen what inputs is talking about standard in inputs is talking about all right so that's what we'll be looking at next then so putting that aspect of the get c and the get k so that's it about this program So as you have seen that example of the project I made, so that is exactly what I mean by getting inputs from the user. All right. So and we're going to use um that actually that video is not you no, know, there are actually different ways. There's another function called the scan f. That is actually what I used for that particular program, that project I did. All right. But this particular one we're talking about, we're focusing more on characters now. All right, so that's why we are seeing this get C and get char or get car. All right, and I want to pronounce that stuff car char. 
So we're going to see how to use the get C and the get car functions in terms of getting characters. Okay, characters, no, characters are usually one letters. Don't forget. So one letters. So let's see a quick program of how to go about that. Um, so as usual, put our include directive, our standard input and output header, or which can call the .h file. Then our hogar, which is the main function, which must be there, whether we like it or not, which can then choose to declare as int, or you don't declare it as int, no problem, you can leave it the way it is. Right. As if you are using code blocks though. So let me just put it as, as int for some. Some software may not accept it that way. So that way. So we want to look at how to let's first start with how to use the get C function. Okay. That's how I try to represent character also, right? So let's just see a quick example. Um I'm oh sorry. I'm actually using a touch screen laptop, so it's just touch itself. All right, so let's continue. Um so let me just write something like an adding of what I'm trying to accomplish here. So I'll say, I'm telling the user now that please type in one character. So I'm telling the user to type in one character for me, for maybe the specific program I'm trying to run. All right, I just noticed there's a mistake in what I just did here. Who can spot that mistake here? If you spot it, you are right here. If you can't spot it, don't worry. You just need to look closer. <laughs> so I forgot to put my T in that point F part. All right. So I just chose to put this first step of telling the user, like guiding the user of, on what to do. So please type in one character, which means I'm expecting the user to type in elector. All right. Then it means that um, I would then need to call for the user to be able to get to type a letter, then I'm going to use this get C or get car. Okay, so let's first see how to use the get C first for now. So you have to use the get C. So I'm just going to write in my get C function. And inside the function, you must put the standard inputs. Because this time around, this is we're working on standard inputs now from the user. Right. When you're talking about standard output, then you're talking about the output of what you are seeing in the screen. That's output. When it comes to inputs, whereby the user is the one typing in the keyboard. So that's just the difference. Don't get me, don't get it mixed up. So we have the can the get C. Then inside the get C, always make sure you put this standard in inside it. All right. Always make sure. And well, it's also very good in this sense, it's very good to declare a variable with it. So let me just declare a variable. I'll just name the variable ch can use any letter by the way okay so since i have this variable here ch i would then need to i would then need to declare my variable all right so i need to declare the variable and um, let's say that means i'm going to say the variable is since i'm dealing with characters so i'm going to use a character here i would say ch okay so that's the character i will be using for this program then i'm going to print it out so i want to print out whatever the user type in so i'm going to say i just add some statements so the character you just entered is then i'm going to use the specifier of character specifier okay which is the percent c we've talked about this in the previous videos all right so percent c let me put my new line then the, since i'm working with point f i'm going to refer the variable of what point f should work on okay what this format specifier has to work on so i want to work on this ch variable yeah all right so i'm going to put the ch variable and i'll close my semicolon so that's the end so as usual put your return zero all right is there any error is there any error i can't find any so let's try it let's run this program okay so it's telling me now please type in one character so let me type in one character let me say this is a i'll click enter the character you just entered is a Wow, so you see how it goes. So that is just how to play around it.
this is not rocket science you can see how chilling it is all right so that is just how to use the get c get c function all right also you should by now know that it's not safe it's composing you must declare a variable here i can choose to which we have actually also done in the previous lecture that i can choose to in short let me just comment this comment this now this get c standard input i can choose to just put everything inside here that's get c s c d i n and if i run the code it should still give me the same output so let me just put in letter again j you can see it's still the same thing so it depends on how you just your own personal style of coding okay so that's just the major thing here there's no like one way of getting things done all right there's actually no one way so just keep that at the back of your mind now looking at the next part okay we have we've just done the aspect of get c now let's talk of get cha or get ka any i want to pronounce it all right um so let's use the same example mm, let's just use the same example no need to go so you just the get c and get ka are doing the same work you get it's just your choice of which of them you prefer using and realistically get ka is kind of simpler because you won't need to put anything inside this part just like the way we didn't get c so i'll just i'll just put my car and I'll remove this stuff there. I don't need it. And this place, I'll just put my CH there. Then let's point this again. So let me just put Y. You can see the same format of output. So that those two works the same way, just different way of writing them up. So this get this get car don't need anything in the parameter at all. Just leave it that way. But you can put the get car also inside your ch here instead of your, your points f and it will still run the same exact way all right so i think that is it about that then let's move on to the aspect of printing out our outputs so printing out on the screen so this time i want to look at put c and put car so those are the two functions we want to look at next put c and put car both of them do the same job just like this get c and get car all right it just depends on which of them you feel is shorter and faster for you to use well let's just look at it so i don't want to decide for you i don't want to give you my own opinion yet but first see it so then you decide for yourself then i'll let you know also my own decision of which of them is faster for me all right so for this let me just clean up this let's see another kind of example so let's take for example um Okay, now remember now we are trying to print stuff outside in the screen for viewers to see it. All right. So since I'm printing it out to the screen, that means I will put the value that will be printed out in the screen inside my code editor. So I'll be going to put the value my own self then to come out and the user will see it say the way I personally chose to do it. All right. So let's see how that goes. Um, let me use the same ch as the variable. This time, let me use a number. I think we already know we know 65 as a in terms of character. All right. So 65 is a, and that our ASCII character table. If you have, if you don't get what I'm saying, just go back to my previous lectures. I've talked about that already. All right. So just know that all my lectures will be back to back in terms of like my previous lecture so i i can't be going backwards i don't know just just know that one i back with my so always check back and make sure you are following up with what i'm saying all right so let's quickly move on um in short before i continue self i just remember i almost forgot um always when you like and subscribe to the channel also click that bell notification and click on all so when you click on all it means you will get notified in all all um, content i'm uploading instantly all right don't allow it to be personalized click on all in that bell button all right then at the same time i choose to want to put this um added about the um, method whereby i'm creating a whatsapp group chat to be a channel not a group chat though like it's not we won't be able to text here i'll just be the one sending my links of any new videos i've uploaded okay so that's just what that particular group chats will be only about 
just so that some people who might not have data and to get to see that notification in their YouTube, they will at least know on WhatsApp that something has dropped. Same, maybe probably the time in the night, they can do midnight plan and just do what they want to do with it. All right, so we just say an initiative and just click on the description beside the video, you'll see the link to the WhatsApp group, then you can join the group chat. All right, so let's quickly continue. Then we have the C, then we have, I display a variable which I named CH65, and we know that it is actually A if I'm to like print F, and use piston C as the format specifier. All right, so let's just see how to go about that. And mind you, even this print F that we have been doing since is another function example of a standard output. Just put that in the back of your mind. So also print F is an example of a standard output because it helps us print out what we are seeing, okay? So not just even this put C and put car we are trying to attempt now. All right, so let me just quickly go. So we have character, that has numeric value of 65 is let me put that space so what's the answer by now i believe you know the answer should be since i use percent c that means i'm printing it in letter so and as and it means 65 is a all right so i will expect to see that a in that part and as usual let me put my variable which is ch then my semicolon. Now this is a variable ch. I've not declared it yet, so I can choose to declare it here. Or I can put it here. Okay. Now let's see in terms of printing it out. No, this first print f will print out this text for me. Okay, to print out this line of text for me oh in short okay let me just show you something <laughs> something just came my mind let me just show you something let me just show you an ex remember i said print is also a standard output way also it's like another example so if i to run this as you can see obviously we have one that the character that has numerical value of 65 is a because of this percent c print out the letter character of the number 65 all right now there's also another way of going around this okay so that is where put c comes in okay so i want to print that same a this time around i don't use print f format so i can just put c now that put c as two arguments or two parameters all right so those two parameters are the ch oh sorry this is a number 65 i shouldn't be using character here should be an int, an integer, all right. So we have ch. In short, let me even just show you something. When I did this stuff, you can not notice this stuff that came. That was what even remind me that I made a mistake. That this should be an integer. Remember I said to have two parameters, all right. So the first parameters it will have is this, an integer variable, which is our ch, which I want to use now. All right. So the next one, which is file star, is just talking about um, streams. All right, which is just a a word, which I will let you know soon. So I'm just going to write ch. So ch. Um. Then the word will be standard output, just like that first gets c that has standard input right up inside of it. So that's how this put c also has its own input out of it and see and it is standard output okay so it has two arguments first you put the variable second you put this particular std out all right it's very very important so let's run this so you can see our results here yeah, it gives us a mind you um this since we're dealing with characters already like this put c it means put character which means that already substitute, it doesn't need like this point F. Now we have to put this percent C for it to work. Okay. But when I'm dealing with this put C, it's automatically in character. So we don't need to put any percent F and percent F inside the argument at all. That's why we put any percent C. I mean percent C rather. That's why we put percent C around the atom. We only put that percent C in our point F. That's if you want to use point F. All right. So for put C, this is the format of writing put C. Just know that that's how the format works. So it's, it's only results, it just really bring out the results only, which is our A, all right? 
So if I put on that number here, let me say 67, it should give me, I think, C. Build. You can see it gives us C. So the first is still C, this one too is C. All right. So let's see how the, let's look at the other way of doing it, which is our put car. So this is one way. If you like that way, no problem. Good luck to you. Then let's see this other way, which you just need to put only the function. Put car. Okay. Sorry, my phone just rang. All right, so which is put car, then you just put the value of what you want the put car to do. So I can just say ch, I mean the variable rather. So I just put put car and I put the variable and I print this. You can see it still gives us the same results. Ch, our put car is ch. So I think the only difference between these two is just that this one has two arguments, this one has only one. So I think the only stress here is you typing this std out. And just that you know, sometimes you can even forget to put this std out. So you can just choose to stick with your put car than using that put c. All right, just my personal opinion. All right. Let's just see one more example with this put c and put car stuff we've been talking about since. Let's see one last example. It's actually uh, a quite a funny example. So I just choose to want to use it here. So we already know 65, but I can put it directly here. Hey, yeah, very good. Thank God I just remember this. Like something like this now, put car 65. I can print this like this and to give me whatever character it's, that is 65. So if I print this out, you can see A, straightforward. Like I don't need stories in the code. The style of the code is even very short. So you can use this print and put car also to make it faster for you. Though the same way you can still do the same stuff. I I can still use the same put C though, just so you know. So to do that, you're just going to write the put C, then you put your 65, then as usual, you now put this stuff. So I've, I've typed too much, too many things. That's just the only difference there. But the results will still be the same. As you can see, we still have the same A. Yeah. All right. So let me just erase this. Erase. Okay. Um, so let's just do something. So if I put, for example, put char and I put 10, what it means that it will give me the character of 10. Okay. If you check that table, look for 10, you'll see the character of 10. I don't, I don't want to see the character of 10 out in my uh, vocally, but I want to see just something quite amazing in a way so let me put the same 65 oh no let me use 66 this time around here let me put again the put car then let me put the put car 67 then let me put again the put car 10 let's see the outputs of this code i'm doing so I'm going to, you can guess the output first, pause the video and guess what it will give us. If you guess it and you're right, man, I'll just clap, I'll just clap it for you like this, all right? So, build, wait, there's an error, only fine from, okay, I didn't spare this car. Watch this error here, you can tell me, you showed me that line 7, I think I that red part in the line 7, that there's a mistake there, and there's actually a mistake, I forgot to put C in that my put. All right, so let's build again. So this is the output. So we have the A, B, C. Now, can you tell me what, why is it this way? Like, reason how it is this way. Pause the video and reason it. Okay, I believe you've made your guesses. Um, if you get it right, wow, that is very brilliant. Okay, if you get it wrong, don't worry. You will get to understand it here. So the put card 10, that 10 is actually part of that ASCII table. If you check the character for 10, it is a new line. So that's why we are actually having a new line here. New, new line here. That's why it is in A, B, C in vertical line. So it's creating a new line. That's present, that put car 10 is putting a new line. Look at that last 10 I put here. That was all put this gap between C and this process. Okay, so put, put car 10 is like a new line. 
format of writing it in a shorter way. All right, so I think we've talked a lot about this whole input output stuff. So let's just move on. Let's move on. Let's move on, please. Do I have enough time? This is same point F where we've talked a lot about print F, so I won't need to do any practical aspect of print F, but I'll just say one or two things about it again, just for reminder's sake. So always remember that you should use exactly the same number of expression as the number of format specifiers within the format range. What that is saying is that, for example, if we have percent D or percent C, we have two format specifier in this first part of our double quotes in our print F. The arrangement you use, which means this percent D will take this first variable, while this percent C will take the second variable. It will take the variable accordingly to the way you arrange it. Okay, so be careful, be mindful of how you arrange it. All right, so that's just what I just wanted to know in this aspect. All right, and this print F has many specifiers. We've not really used much. We'll be using percent D, percent C, percent F, percent LF. That's what we've been doing, okay? But there are actually more than that, which later you'll soon get to understand better. But this is just a short table of few of them, which we'll soon be looking at as time goes on. So I'm not really talking much about this table. So just get an idea that there are actually many. There are even more than this table. So this table is not, it's not even enough in the list. All right, so get, yeah, we'll get to see more of that um, the more we go, the more we proceed, all right? So let's look at the next part, um, converting to hexadecimal numbers. Okay, wow, this is the last, this page is the last page for the story, okay. So converting to hexadecimal numbers, now this is, we're going to primary school now, or is it, I don't think they explain this in primary school, probably secondary school, like high school, all right. So hexadecimal number is just like, you know, decimal numbers, you know, decimal number. Right, remember what I thought I said about decimal numbers just that time? That C programming, they call decimal numbers, as in they call the old numbers, which we know as decimal numbers. Okay. So not decimal numbers we know in our primary school. All right. Sorry. Okay. So not decimal number we know in our primary school. So they call our decimal numbers our old numbers, decimal numbers. So, put in your mind that all numbers, even in primary school, they taught us that all numbers are base 10 numbers. So, if I'm saying, if I'm calling numbers like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, what I'm calling, those numbers I'm calling, they're all base 10 numbers automatically, like in the, by default, they're base 10 numbers. Okay, so those numbers are what we call all numbers, then C chose to call it decimal numbers. Okay, then we cannot convert base 10 to hexadecimal number now hexadecimal number is a base 16 number so it's just like saying once convert base 10 to base 16 all right so it's just as you want to convert base 10 to base 16 and if you want to do that like mathematically Sean, i'm not talking about c again if you want to do that like mathematically that's where you draw that table just the same way you are converting base 10 to base 2 whereby you do a one kind lcm table and do that stuff and do remainder whatever remainder whatever then from bottom to up you not we will now write the answers with your um up arrow stuff <laughs> so something like that so that's just how to solve it in terms of want to do it raw with your hand all right so this is what is a decimal numbers is a decimal number now is a 16 is a base 16 that means instead of us like when we're converting from base 10 to base 2 then i'll do that lcm table formats then i'll put two then i'll put the base 10 number let me start to convert base then 10 base 10 to base 2. Now I'm just going to do that LCM stuff. I'm going to put 2 and I'm going to put 10 in the other side. I'll not be doing 10 divided by 2, remainder 0, um, you know, 2 again, 2 divided by 5, 2 remainder 1, stuff like that. But now this time around, I'm going to use 16, not 2. Okay, so in terms of solving it to go. Now coming back to C programming. Now C programming, extra decimal numbers normally are 0 to 9, all right? Now, it also has from 10 to 15. Now, that 10 to 15 uses letters. So, these are the letters A, B, C, D, E, F. That's what it uses from 10 to 16. All right. It can be capital letter, it can be small letter. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't change anything. It is, the major focus is that it will use a letter. So, a letter represents that number. So, letter A, capital letter A, and small letter A is the same thing as same 10. Capital letter B, small letter B is the same thing as same 11, irrespective of how you choose to want to design your right top in your hexadecimal number. So I'll still want to see a practical example of how to convert that. Um, so once you convert decimal numbers to hexadecimal number. So let's see a quick 
example to that. So I'm going to let me just clean up this whole portion. I'll just make a very short stuff. And x, I'll just give this one 20. So I'm going to say print. Okay, so I want it to print. Remember, this is an integer. This is 20. And this is a decimal number. Like integers are decimal numbers. So this is like a base 10 number. This is like a O number number. <laughs> o number number. So yeah, something like that. So now I want to convert it to hexadecimal number. Now, so before I convert it, let me just show you that we are indeed solving an O number. So I'm just going to write, write it this way. Sorry, uh, I mistakenly clicked something on my keyboard. Okay, thank God. Okay, so we're back here. So remember this specifier, this D specifier is or decimal specifier. So if I point this, it should give me the 20 that is there, which means our decimal is indeed 20, right? Now, if I sound to convert this 20 to extra decimal number, so let me just write a sentence. So in X, that's extra decimal number. Result is so there's now a special format specifier for extra decimal number, which is beta x. Okay, so you can be small letter, you can be capital letter, it's your choice. If you make it small letter, your output will be in small letter. Remember, just like I said here, that it can be capital letter A, B, C, D, E, F, or it can be small letter A, B, C, D, E, F. So if you use small letter X, yeah, as a specifier, that means everything will be in small letters. So let me print out this now. Okay, this is actually an x. This is 14 because well, 20 is too small. Let me look, let me use a bigger number. Let me use a bigger number like something. I think 200 is enough. Let's try that. Good. You can see now C8. In short, let me let me increase it to something like this. Okay, let's run this. Okay, you can see the output of this result in hexadecimal number. So you want to convert this hexadecimal number back to decimal number then you will now use the if you want to die you want to do it early with your maths so you have to just solve that on the wall but well i will see sure you have to convert back to decimal using our c programming if you don't stress yourself and using your math your bio and your calculator all right so what we're just doing here we're just convert through i'm just showing you how to convert from decimal number to extra decimal number you just need all you just need to do is to put this specifier small letter x just like this table, I think this table X should be in this format specifier. Because this is small letter X here. He said it prints an hexadecimal integer. All right. So that's what it, it does. So you can see the E is in small letter. Let me make this X capital letter X and let me run this again. I expect the E should give me in capital letter this time around. You can see the E is in capital letter. So it just depends on your style. It doesn't really matter how you choose to want to use the X specifier. All right. So that's just it about that. Um, okay, I said I want to show you how to convert back. Okay, so to convert back, let me just say something. Okay, since I want to keep this body in my head, we have 4E20. Okay, 4E20, 4E20. 4E20. All right, good. Now to convert back, I just need to put this stuff as T. Which means I'm converting. This is uh, this is already an hexadecimal number, all right. So now I want to convert it to hexadecimal integer. Like that. So I want to convert it to decimal, to decimal integer. All right. So I'll just put my percent D here. But now note that this will not run for me to show me an error. Let me purposely run this so you see what I'm saying, and I'll explain why. So build and run. Actually, this is like this is an error. This is not the results we are expecting. Because we started with I think two is already two thousand or twenty thousand something like that, right? So I was even hoping it would bring an error in this error message. I don't know why it's bring a fake output for me. So what I just want you to understand here is that although it's short, so let me check something. I think I use floats. Okay. Okay, so what I want you to get in this aspect is that looking at my notes, there's this last part I wrote here. 
So let's read it together. In C, program, in C programming language, a hexadecimal number is represented by preceding with OX or capital letter OX. You get as an O is the O like zero, zero, not, let, not letter O, number zero. Okay. So it is zero X and or you can choose to write zero capital letter X. Okay. So it always starts that way. You can, you can just put the hexadecimal number directly like that in C. So that means what it's trying to say is that from this four here, let me just put my zero X here to start it. Then to make the C know that, okay, oh, this is actually an hexadecimal number. That's what the programmer is actually trying to tell me. All right, so now I understand. Now let me print this. You can see it gives us that result, 20,000. You can see how that tiny mistake, that tiny mistake is going to give us stupid errors. Like, so that's just the stuff. So just don't forget this OX. You can use small letter X, you can use capital letter X, it doesn't really matter. Okay. Just make sure you start with OX, then put the actual hexadecimal value. All right. So anytime you're seeing hexadecimal value, you know that the actual hexadecimal value starts after the X. Why the OX is just for like C programming rules. All right. Just so the program will know that this is an hexadecimal number, not just a normal constant that you are writing there, declaring to X. You understand? So I think that is it about that aspect. So we are do this. Where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Okay, we are our final two. Specifying the minimum field weights using this precision specifier. So let's start with the first one, specifying minimum field width. Okay, what that means is that in C programming or C language allows you to add an integer between the percentage signs so all this our percentage d that we've been using we can also put a number like percent 2d or percent 3d that's what it sent to tell us then it will have an effect okay surely it will have an effect so that effect is what we call the minimum field width so that effect is just creating a gap that's just the only thing it does like nothing really special or less probably depend on just what you want to do or how you want to run a particular program for yourself all right so just for knowing sake let's just look at it so you at least get an idea when you see it in any program so that's the focus so i'm going to say let me name this one number one um let me give it a number let's say 15. let me name another variable so let me give it one two three four five six one two three four five I create two variables you see here, which means I have to declare those variables, right? So that is int norm one, norm two. Okay. So what I want to do, I'm going to just create princess. Let me create two princess. So percent D. Let me give this one as the number one. That print F. Percent D norm two. Okay. Now we already know that our normal percent D, this should just give me exactly what is inside the variables. So I'll just see, for example, I point out this now, I'll just exactly what I've written here. So let me just run this code. Let's see the output quickly. So you can see nothing special 15, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That is just how it is here. So no big deal, right? Now, let me put something now. Let me show you a slight change. If I put, for example, two. No, let me not. Let me, you won't get to see it better here. Let me use this first one here. So if I choose to put two in this one, you watch what will happen here. Then I, I point out this. Oh, it's something. I think something is wrong. I'm expecting something to happen. Wait, let me increase. Let me increase the number to maybe five. Let me build this again. Okay, that's weird. So it's not really bring. Um, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, just almost flashed out of my mind. Okay, let me. I will explain what happened previously, and I will explain why the result is also like this now. All right. In short, I think for me, to, for you to understand, let me start with why the result is like this first. Okay. 
Um, so what this five means is that we are like we know we have 15. 15 is how many numbers? Two numbers. Two numbers. I like there are two numbers, one and five, 15, right? So two numbers. So we have and here I specified five. So if you remove that two from five, it will remain three, right? That means it will be left with three. So that three is actually the three spaces here. You can see this one, two, three. So those spaces that are here are like three spaces that purposely left this space because of I specify five. So I'm just pushing it to the right. That's just the only thing I'm doing here. And if you notice that time I used two and we didn't see anything, it's because two is like the total number is already two. So it can't move anywhere it has to be above this 15 it has to be above 15 i mean it has to be like above one and five okay like for example if i put three here now this should give me that gap at least one gap because this is above the two numbers that are there which is one and five so this is three we're talking about three now so to give us one gap that's the one gap that is here all right so that's just what this whole minimum width stuff is just saying. So it just depends on your how you want to maybe customize your code or whatever stuff you choose to want to do. Okay. So looking at this, um, looking at this one below, or let me just talk about this one again. I can also choose to put zero here, so we can really see what is really the space that is really there. So if I want to really see the space that is there, I'll put zero. So zero three. If I see that's the space there, zero. Let's do the same thing for that five that we did the other time. So I'll remove this thing and put five here. And let me build and run this again. So you can see this is you just made, made us to see the actual spaces that we were not seeing before. So you'll be sure that yes, there's actually indeed spaces there. Okay. So that's just it about that. Um now for this aspect of one, two, three, four, five. Well, like what I just want to say about this, like, okay, let me just give you let me just ask you a question now. If I'm to put in this percent deep partner if i if i put two yeah what do you think will give me the answer what do you think will be my output pause the video and raising this from what i've said already in the aspect of the principle of norm one that we've done just now now using that old idea i i made mention of raising this aspect of this second principle what would would you think this answer will be in this time in this time in this frame pause this video and think of it first all right i believe you've paused the video and you've thought of it if you've not paused the video and you just want to you want just want to push you don't you don't get you don't have chills you are not helping yourself because sometimes you need to crack your brain okay but well, i know there are people that don't have chills <laughs> okay so that's just it so what's this two we print printer let's just see the printer why really just explain whatever stuff now you can see we see the same one two three four five nothing happened nothing changed why it's it remains this way because two is less than you can, you can say we have one three four five which means we have five digits there and this two is too small so it's not enough to push this stuff to the left so what can we use to push what number can we put here for this all numbers here to push to the right rather which means i'm going to use six since these numbers are five they're about to push, push it to the right in one step i'm going to put six there so you have to be above the total number that are there so if i cancel this and let me just put zero so that we can see that push so i'll put zero behind just so we can see it okay so i'm building this you can see the push there Just not say this thing is zero my mind you, there's no zero here this very poor okay so that's just for us to see this stuff so let me remove this because some people can some people can be very funny let me remove this cancel this let me build this like this so you can see the gap yeah so that's the gap i'm just trying to let you know about so you can push it uh, any I would push if I put this in as 12 now to push it far beyond you can see so that's how it has pushed it that way so we can just be playing around with stuff like this okay I think we've talked a lot about this already so the last part wow I'm going to talk about this precision specifier now you can put a period you can put a when I say period as in full stop, like dots, okay? That's this dot you are seeing here. So you can put a period and an integer right after the minimum field width specifier. The combination of the period and the integer makes up, sorry, makes up a precision specifier. 
Okay, so the completion of the period and the integer mix up the precision rate. This will make more sense if we use decimals. Let us clean this. So I'm going to use floats this time around. And make this one maybe decimal, which means I'm going to use floats as a data type. So let me just move this one, this whole one. Okay, so I can choose to use float, I can choose to use double, it doesn't really matter. All right, so floats. Um, let me just erase this line. Yeah, then I'm going to change this to really norm and get rid of this. Okay, so now I want to look at this precision specified. It says you can put a period and an integer right after the minimum field width. Remember, we just talked about the minimum field width now. So the minimum field width is the first like the first output in terms of the whole number aspects if you want to like push it or if you don't want to push it something like that that is actually the first thing we we were talking about initially all right then the aspect of the dots that are trying to let us know is that for the aspect of the dots the dots is just a way of like pushing our values as it's giving it a frame of where to stop so for example if i do something like 2.2 yeah now this two is the minimum field width okay why this dot two is the decimal place so i'm saying to like that let this value stop in two decimal place we look at this my norm this norm has i mean decimal place it has four decimal places which is two three four okay it has four decimal now i'm forcing it to stop in two decimal place that's what that dot two means Okay, so that's what this sentence is trying to let us know here. Yeah. All right, so if I run this now. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm dealing with floats, so I shouldn't be using D. I should be using F. Okay. All right, let's go again. Wow, so we can see it endpoints the 4 and 5. So it means the one point two three that two decimal places make sure it's stick with that two decimal places all right so that's just what all of this will be saying is just all about let's say something if i put something like let's say seven year so it's worked on that seven in the sense that we have five numbers here okay then the remaining is like six, seven, all right? In short, let's put the zero so we can really count the number of spaces we actually did here to be very sure of what we are doing. Okay, seven is actually theory then. So we have two decimal places here. And it's just, it is um theory because like, for example, now we've already forced this thing to be two decimal places. So we shouldn't be using this to even count that in the first place. So since it is seven, Remember the, the major numbers here are one, two, three. So we have three numbers. Then these are dots now. It's also part of the number, which where we know at the back of our mind that dot is not a number. We just see it that way. All right. So since we have seven here, so we are expected to have seven number dots and space. Okay. So if we say we have number one, we have number two, we have number three, which is we have three digit numbers. Then we have one dot, then it makes it four okay so and we have seven years so seven minus four we're left with three those are the three spaces so i see here which is this zero 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 all right so that is just how um we can use the precision stuff so i think the major goal about this precision stuff is just for you to focus on the aspect of the decimal part that is this point two or points whatever so you want to let it in a decimal place value all right so that's just it's about that so the first whole number here is talking about the minimum field width so this one still follow the minimum field width law which we've talked in the other last parts of our videos of this same video though okay then the point two is talking about the decimal place you want it to be fixed on all right so that's just it about that also there's something i just realized i didn't mention let me just quickly mention that before we end this video cover we actually told it the whole materials here let me just mention something here and by do just like I said, we can still use double here and run this to still run the same way. Remember, double and float are the double without difference. So that double has stores more memory and has two bytes. 
in the memory and more precision like 15 15 precision in decimal values all right so that's just it um but that's not what i'm trying to even remember that i didn't do so let's say for example i have something like this now mm -hmm. let me just let me just use double to explain this aspect which you can still use double but i just want to use integer let me clean this so let me say if i have something like this minus value this time around let me increase it to seven or let me say eight okay let me put a zero before it oh no let me just say it the point about this negative um aspects oh i did integer i should change this space to f sorry i mean oh Ctrl Z, Ctrl Z, Ctrl Z, um, D. Okay, so D is what should be here. Since I've changed this integer, this space is no longer fruits. So the specifier I should be using should be percent D. All right, so that's why it was giving me some kind of errors. Okay, let's print this again. Um, short, let me remove this. It was useless there. Now, you may be like there's a negative value here right but we can't really see what the negative value is really doing here but it is actually doing something let me just say it i just chose to add it in this video um like no we have one two three four five we have five numbers here now the negative is just like the opposite of you no know, the what we'll be doing is our positive values in our minimum field width so what the negative value does for its own case is that it increases other space we are doing zero zero in the pre part of the number so this negative will make it be in the both part that means after the number all right so that means since we have five numbers here that means after this number there are actually spaces just that we can't see those spaces okay that's why i initially didn't want to explain this because i won't i don't know if you will move to if you will get what i just i'm just trying to say here. so they're actually like spaces here all right so which means the out the real output is just something like this one two three four five so if we have five digits number fine then we specify that it should be 8. So that means 8 minus 5 is what? 3. So we have 3 extra spaces, which I chose to represent those spaces as zeros. I just chose to represent that. So just that you know that. So that you know that at least there are spaces there. All right. So that's just what that part is saying. Okay. Mm, I'm thinking that. I'm thinking something. I think I can, I can look for a way to produce it out. An idea just came to my mind now. Let me say percent D again. Let me create another variable here, norm. I mean some norm too. And I just came to mind I can use I can get what I'm trying to explain with this idea. So number one, well, what's going on now? Okay, so number one, number one, norm two. Now, all this is that all this i'm doing that i'm playing around with, that's how you should be learning that's how you should be typing and you should be attempting things from your head like be playing around be testing things that's how to know all right it's not everything videos will teach you they can't teach you everything so i'm just trying to teach you some more things like that extra things which i don't like making videos lengthy but for this case now it's not seem lengthy so this is norm two so now remember what i said about point f earlier when i was explaining point f that whenever you put these two, whenever I, whenever I put two specifier, the first one will take the first variable, the second one will take the other variable as you are arranged it. At the way you arrange it is how they are going to take it. So they are going to share it that same way. So that, which means this first percent D is taking this number one. This second percent D is taking this number two. Let me remove this comment. So let's run this and see what the output will give us. Good, this is a perfect example. Yeah, you can see the gap here. That gap is those zeros I was talking about. On the norms, I expect this answer to jump back together. Let me show you that to jump back now. Let's say I remove this minus eight. Let me point the same thing now. You'll see how they will get close to themselves. You can see the difference. Good, I believe you are smiling now. <laughs> so, minus eight will now do that stuff I'm trying to say since, which is this. Okay. So what it actually did, what just happened here again? Let me just say it. So we have two, three, four, five. So since we have five numbers and I, I used eight. So eight minus five, we have three more. So we have an extra zeros there. 
All right. Then the next thing we have and that's format specifier as percent which percent D, which is two three four. So two three four. So what just happened now? These first three zeros are like deleted in a way. So let me just put them as spaces. So that's why the output looks this way. All right. So I think that's all for this video. Where uh, we've really learned a lot, honestly. Like, yeah. So I think this is enough. And you can just practice and practice, practice, practice. Very, very, very important. All right. So don't forget to join the group chats. Okay. Just so you can get notified. That's the channel. It's not a group chat. So there won't be any text. You can't text it. You just only know whenever I drop new video. So I'll be dropping the links. All right. So if you love these videos, please, please comment. Use the comment box. Hit the like button. All right. I like reactions. The way it's, it's like an encouragement format for me. All right. So it's make me encouraged to do more of these videos for you guys. All right. Take care. Have a lovely day. Bye.